All right, let's get this show on the road. All right, um, so welcome to the um, members meeting um, for the 25th of November. Uh, we have some exciting um, news to talk through. And um, you know, as usual, as we're going through this, if you have questions, comments, um, want additional clarification, just raise your hand, let me know. Um, we we'll, should be keeping this between 30 minutes and 30 and 45 minutes. We'll try and move through it pretty quick, but we have a lot to cover. Um, so we'll get right into it. I realize this is poorly placed. Did that just exit me out or am I still good? Okay. Um, so key points, this is, um, for October. So, um, uh, obviously, this is close to um, about three, four weeks out of date, um, but we pulled these at the end of the month. In the month for October, um, cash in the bank was 38784 This has been an improvement um, over previous months. Um, current balance was from our board meeting, so apologies. Um, but we're right around that same amount. We've had a couple of our larger invoices for some of the youth programs and things like that that we do um, that have come in over uh, this past month that's been improving our overall cash and financial situation. Um, so back to um, a few months when, or a number of months when we anticipate that we'll be cash flow positive. Uh, so very nice to see those coming in. Uh, we had a number of um, other events, including the uh, Red Bull Hackathon um, and a couple of other workshops. Uh, that we're bringing in revenue as well. So uh, a little bit here, a little bit there, um, overall in, uh, improving uh, financial situation. Um, so happy to see that going upwards. Um, we are gonna be focusing a lot on membership growth um, over November and December. I'll, we'll be talking about Ilde um, over here, his new role um, and some of the plans that he has for that. Um, but we are really excited about the pathway forward. Um, even though there's some areas that we'd like to be doing better, membership in particular. Um, and so we'll be talking about um, that in particular as a primary focus for the next few months. Any questions on the this? All right. Um, so in October, we did see a pretty um, significant drop in um, memberships when we include uh, non-pay members. Um, and this is a combination of not having card da data on file or card decline, things like that. Um, we did have a really significant um, uptick of those over the last month or so. And so we're working on contacting uh, those members and helping them bring their accounts current if they want to, um, or at least getting some clarity on that. We had about twice as many as we normally have in a given month um, in the month of October. So that was a pretty significant um, uptick. And that could be financial um, issues. You know, obviously finances in the tech community right now are pretty tough. Um, and a lot of people are you know, tightening the purse strings in advance of the holidays um, or going through job insecurity, things like that. Um, so we um, are trying to reach out to these um, non-pay members and see what their situation is and help out however we can. Um, but we are right around 141 paying members um, at the end of October. Um, which is a little bit down from the previous month. Um, again, that's including or accounting for all of those non-pays. So on paper, membership was like 152 or so. But we had about 11 um, non-pays over the month of November or month of October, which typically that's like four or five a month. Um, so it was a really significant uptick. Um, and then um, we're also seeing a lot of memberships um, ending due to relocation um, or not using the space uh, actively. Those are the two biggest um, biggest reasons. Uh, we do give all of our members as they're leaving an opportunity. There's a space on our um, on the form that they can fill out like the reason that they're leaving. Um, and we always try and keep an eye on those. And it's a good way to identify if there's issues um, from members not feeling like it's a good value. Um, cost being too high or relocated, uh, things like that. And relocation has definitely been the theme for the past really six months or so. Um, we know a lot of people are relocating out of, out of Silicon Valley um, and we're seeing that in our membership as well. Did you have, I saw your hand go up. Did you have a question? Oh, okay. All right, any questions on this one? All right. Um, so I'm going to jump ahead to the next 
couple slides ahead. Um, and welcome Ilde to our team. Ilde has joined us as our membership coordinator. So round of applause for him. Um, Ilde is going to be, um, is directly tasked with being um, really the point person for handling any issues that are membership related, um, for helping develop um, additional marketing and outreach um, initiatives for us centered around membership specifically, um, growing the body of uh, members of the community. Um, and so really excited to have him on. He's been on for three, we three weeks now, um, and he's been drinking from a fire hose. Um, but doing a great job and is putting together some marketing plans um, and really honing in on how we are delivering our message about what Hacker Dojo is to the larger community and identifying like specific you know, customer archetypes that we appeal to as an organization. Um, so that's when I say membership and marketing plan. Um, so he's been working on developing those specific customer personas. Um, and working on the messaging that we're going to be using to do a lot of that outreach. Um, we also did a couple of more immediate marketing efforts uh, this past week. Uh, Ilde and Tiana took uh, flyers out to local coffee shops. Uh, we're doing a, a mini social media marketing campaign starting next week. Um, attending a couple of new events that we're trying to get news about Hacker Dojo out into the local entrepreneurship community. Um, and then re starting to go back to attending some of the weekly events, um, like the Sunnyvale Farmers Market that we know are hyper local, um, that have a strong overlap between being in our region and being a place where a lot of tech people gather. Now the farmers market doesn't automatically stand out as tech people, but that Venn diagram is pretty close to a circle when you get into Sunnyvale and Mountain View, just because of who's living in the area. Any questions here? If you are interested in helping um, post flyers, uh, deliver pamphlets, um, or go out to like the, one of the farmer's markets and table with us, please do let Ilde know or myself um, or Tiana. We'll all get you connected with Ilde, but he's going to be the one who's um, heading up those efforts. So he's going to be your best point of contact for that. Um, so one of the big things that we're trying to do is really um, focus as part of our focus on membership for the last um, couple of months of this quarter, really dial into what makes being a member at Hacker Dojo valuable and how we can add to that value. So we're working on identifying some additional ways that we can bring value to you as a member of the community. Um, so that's um, adding access to educational platforms um, as something that's included in your membership. Um, resume and interview prep, that's member specific. So if you're a member of Hacker Dojo, you get special access to people who can mentor and support you through an interview or hiring process. Um, with one of our board observers, Shilpa, who most of you have run into around here, um, we are working on a about a six month long entrepreneurship program arc. This will be a series of workshops, classes, um, meetups, um, hackathons that are really designed around supporting um, potential entrepreneurs or people who are already entrepreneurs, but want a little bit more support and direction and may not know like how you protect your IP or defend a patent or how you file incorporation and want some additional information on that. Um, so we're really excited about this arc. We're um, hoping to la launch the calendar of that in January. Right now we're going through and um, getting some feedback from some, some specific uh, VCs, some people who have exited three or four times, um, who have been through kind of the entrepreneurship journey a number of times to um, really hone in on what's going to be most useful to the community um, in broad strokes. And then from that, we're going to fill in specific workshops and things like that. Um, we're also looking for um, uh, looking at how we're handling events. For the most part, we've kept most of our events free. Um, we feel like that's a really big benefit to the community. But we also feel like, to a certain extent, it erodes the value of being a member of Hacker Dojo. We want to make sure that members really are getting value here. So as we are launching like this entrepreneurship arc and other events like that, we are going to start charging for more of the events, but that's not going to hit members. So members who are uh, current with Hacker Dojo, we're really, really committed to keeping free access to these events. Um, and for the events that we um, have historically charged for or are particularly, um, you know, a lot, not like a $10 event attendance fee, but like a $200 workshop, members will see a significant discount for all of those programs. So if anyone's getting charged, um, for an event at Hacker Dojo, members will see a discount off, um, off of that. 
And that's another way that we can really kind of highlight like all the things that the membership helps to go into and support. But we want to make sure that the other people who are attending events and taking advantage of that um, are also contributing as well. It's something that we are, you know, really trying to balance um, being a inclusive, welcoming organization, but also making sure that our core members um, are really finding a good value here. So always, always interested in feedback. So if you want to have a conversation with me about this, we'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions. Um, it's something that we're looking at and exploring, um, but feel pretty confident that this is a good way forward to make sure that Hacker Dojo members feel valued and have easy access to all the programs that we're doing, but also uh, that those programs are helping support the dojo long term. Um, and then we're working on uh, connecting members with local services or other discounted products. That might be discounted um, licenses for Adobe Suite or uh, Fusion 360, things like that. So right now we're working on getting a bunch of different providers on board so that we can start offering um, those to members as well. If there's other things that you would like to see kind of rolled into that membership where you feel like that'd be a big value add, please let Ilda and I know. Um, because this is you know, what we've gathered from talking with some of the members, but we want to hear from more. So if there's things that you want to see specifically, please do let us know. Any questions on that or things you want to see specifically that you want to call out right now? All right. Anything online? All right. All right. So already mentioned welcoming Ilde to the team. Um, we had an opportunity um, last month to attend the Sunnyvale Chamber of Commerce Mixer. Um, so obviously we're in Mountain View right now, but there's a specific reason why we are checking out Sunnyvale. Um, so we are looking at hosting the Mountain View Sunnyvale, a collaborative uh, Chamber of Commerce Mixer in December or January. Um, and we'll talk about that when we jump into the discussion on the new space. We hosted um, a Raga AI workshop complete our first full round of the summit program. Round two started last week. Um, so a lot of appreciation for our instructors, um, Andre, Nicole, and Eva that are um, working on that. They're doing a great job and really appreciate them um, keeping that program running smoothly. Uh, we also put together a new banner for outreach events. So that debuted at the um, Sunnyvale Farmers Market a couple of weeks back. Um, Ilde got his first chance to come out and table with us. I think that was what your fourth day on the job. <laughs> um, also, you may notice that we have some new planters um, and plants. These were donated by uh, Forvia. It's a local company um, that one of our members' husbands work at, works at. Uh, so really appreciate that. Definitely adds a little bit more uh, greenery to the space and appreciate um, uh, you know donations like that that help liven up the space a little bit more. Um, and then the thing that took up um, the first part of my month, we uh, filed our 2023 tax um, filings, uh, working with a new accountant. Um, unfortunately, our accountant from prior years retired. Um, so you know, there's always a little bit of a transition period, but we were able to get those filed and in on time. Um, and so looking forward to jumping into next year's a little bit earlier this time. Um, but one, one more thing off my to-do list. So if you didn't see me the first week of, dis of November, that's mostly where I was. Any questions on this? All right. Is everyone here just to hear about the expansion? Okay. <laughs> um, all right. So um, quick update on that. We have two um, offerings that are currently on the table. Um, most of you have already heard about um, the Space Next Door at 857 Mod. Um, this proposal uh, is a dollar square foot for the expansion space, about 10,000 square feet. Um, they provided three months rent abatements. So that's free rent. Um, you are still paying all of your cam maintenance costs, which is not insignificant. Um, but the base rent um, would be free for those three months with a deposit of the dollar square foot for that space. Um, this would have been a 28 month lease when this was drafted right now, it's down to about a 26 month lease. Um, they are not offering us any extension on the lease in this space. Um, the owners of this building want to sell it. So the two year time frame is the biggest concern for this space because it doesn't give us a lot of long-term stability. We'll be back to the real estate hunt in a year. Um, because as we've 
as we know from this process, it takes a long time to really um, find a good space to move an organization. Um, and so that's an extra challenge. The other proposal that's on the table is off of Geneva um, Road in Northern Sunnyvale. It's about two and a half miles from here um, as you drive. It's about two miles as the crow flies. It's pretty close. Um, this property comes with a $100,000 10 improvement allocation. Uh, that means that for any build out um, renovations that we need to do, we will be reimbursed up to $100,000 for that. This is a really very generous allocation given, as I'll show in some videos, how little work actually needs to be done. But there's one really big thing that I want to highlight. Going in next door with a shared wall are going to be pickleball courts on the other side. So a big chunk of this TI number is specifically to soundproof that wall and not soundproof it a little, soundproof it a lot. Um, so that's where a big chunk of the $100,000 would be going towards, probably a bit between fifty and 70000 of it. But that does still give us twenty. 30, 40,000 to work on things like improved security cameras, Wi-Fi access points, um, moving any walls we might need to do, landscaping, anything that's building related, we will be able to um, allocate that towards. The challenge obviously with, with the reimbursement is you have to have the money up front, um, which we'll be talking about how we look at um, handling that. Um, but that's the primary situation um, or primary new point on the Geneva expansion. Um, with that, we get six months rent free and then six months at half rent. Um, the rent is well below market rate. Um, as soon as I'm not under an NDA, I'll share more information about that. But given the nature of this lease that we are the one organization that this property is being offered to, um, we can't disclose all the terms um, just yet. Suffice to say, we are paying rent, but it isn't full market rate. It's a pretty good deal. Um, if you look at our financial projections, you can back calculate what that rent actually is very easily. I just can't disclose it, um, as a base number. Um, it does come with a five-year lease and given, um, this is a building that's currently owned by Google. So given Google's current, um, offloading of properties at the end of that five year, it's pretty likely that either will be offered a five-year extension or that building may be up for sale. And hopefully we're in a financial situation at that point that that might be something that we could look at actually purchasing the building if we find that's a really great long-term home for us. Um, I will click real quick through some of the financial projections. Um, so we've done a pretty comprehensive financial projection for both spaces, covering the primary areas that we feel like we would have the potential to bring in revenue. So this is um, cubicle space, build bays, gaming area, locker rentals, um, room um, event rentals like we normally do, um, youth programs, team building activities, membership growth, kind of all rolled into, um, all rolled together. For Geneva, we've broken out, out by both locations. Um, so for Geneva, the number that really always stands out to me is this line. This is cash flow. So this is based on our current burn rate slash growth rate and our seasonality, um, assuming that in this location, we operate at relatively close to break even year over year, which is about where we're at right now. Uh, this is what our cash flow looks like with all the benefits we have over the first, well, it's for the two years. Um, the key point on this is we hit a negative cash flow of about $18,000 about four months in, three, four months in. Um, and so this is, um, the biggest challenge that we have to overcome is with the TI um, reimbursements coming as a reimbursement rather than money up front means that we need to raise money to afford all that TI, but also moving into a new space. Um, again, even though rent is free for the first six months, um, the CAM cost, which is your community area maintenance, that's um, building maintenance, electrical um, insurance, property taxes, all that still comes out to be about $16,000 a month. So it's not a small number by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but the good news is, is shortly after that, we get back into positive territory. So we have a sharp dip down as we move into a space um, and then accelerate back out. Um, so we are going to need to do a fair amount of fundraising to make sure that we have the cash reserve uh, reserves to make this space possible. Um, and so this whole, um, 
this whole projection does include things like um, new security cameras, um, IT equipment. Um, you know, we all know that Wi-Fi is probably the most important thing to have up and running. Um, so all of those infrastructure buildouts are included in this. So some of that would get reimbursed, um, but again, having the cash up front is the biggest challenge with um, with the building this size. It's um, eighteen thousand square feet, so it's a really significant step up. The other important thing to note, um, oops, guys, I'm not actually sharing that tab. The other important thing to note is, if we take Geneva, we are still in this building for two years. So we would not be abandoning this facility, would not be closing this facility. This facility would continue to run and we continue to keep it active and operate um, for that two year overlap. So that's why I say all the Geneva projections um, are based upon operating at a break even at this point, um, which is about, like I said, about where we are year over year for this, um, for this facility right now. Members would get access to both spaces. So if you're a member, you get access to both of them. You can choose to co-work over there, co-work over here, up to you. If you have a dedicated desk, anyone that currently is a member or has a dedicated desk will get first shot at either transferring that over there um, if you want to or um, signing up for one um, before anyone else has access to that. So again, we wanna make sure that we're focused on our members, make sure that you guys have first shot at anything that we're expanding or offering. Um, but this is a building that we're pretty excited about. Um, as kind of that step forward as an organization. Um, a few of you have already had a chance to tour the facility. Um, we did a couple of preliminary tours. We've been trying to get access to do a full tour with the larger community and it just has not worked out yet um, with Google and CBRE. So I'm sorry that we're not having this conversation in the space so you can look around, but I did bring some videos. So, um, if you don't have any questions about this, I'll jump into some of the video walkthroughs and I apologize for the quality. This was our first time in the space and I was just grabbing them with my cell phone. So I wish we had something better. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, so that, um, it's a great question. Let's go back over. So it's actually, we run into a similar problem. Um, we have a pretty big, um, downturn initially, and then we're back into positive territory relatively quickly. Um, the biggest difference between the two is this space needs a lot more work and needs to be furnished. Uh, we have a lot of that equipment already, but we don't have all of it. So we have a much bigger kind of like initial financial hurdle into that space than into, um, into Geneva. Um, but overall, the financial projections for expanding here are also very, very good after that first like six months of kind of crunch zone. Um, so, um, so yeah, this is for the first year. By the end of the first year, we're running about a $70,000 net positive for the year on that cash flow. So um, in comparison to Geneva, I think we're at about the same spot in September, a little bit higher cash wise. So really on par with each other. Um, the length of the lease for that space over there is a big challenge, um, but definitely also doable financially um, for an expansion op option. Um, so that's essentially taking like this space as a break even for the year, um, which so we haven't factored in all the revenue that we get from this space, uh, like the current summer summit programs, things like that that currently have us operating at pretty close to break even uh, for the year. So that's assuming that we continue break even in this facility um, during that time. And so all of our membership projections are also membership growth, not like we have this many members and these members are now paying for that space. So we really did try and break out what growth in a new space would look like from our current operating expenses and costs. Yes. After that time, though, it seems as we would have a net reduction in available space. 
Likely. Um, and that's something that we're having conversations. We are hoping that in two years, we're in a financial position where we have a lot more options available to us. This building we know is going to be on the market. It's actually probably already on the market. Um, so that may be that we love this space and want to purchase it. And the market conditions in two years might be such that that's financially you know, viable for us. There's a lot of um, loans and opportunities for purchasing of buildings um, that if we have a strong revenue history at that point, um, that may be something that we look very seriously at purchasing this side of the or this section of the building of the complex and making this a permanent home as well. Um, it's hard to say what the market will look like in two years right now. It's terrible. Um, but at the same time, rents haven't come down significantly. Um, because a lot of landlords don't want to get tied into a five-year or 10-year lease at a below market rate night right now when they're hoping that the market will rebound in a year or two. Um, so there's some not great things going on in the commercial real estate market, but we're going to hit a crunch point relatively soon, um, in my view, where um, just basic bills um, that people are holding vacant property have to continue paying will kind of reach a point where they start offloading that property for, um, you know, I not necessarily like pennies on the dollar, but significant reductions over what we're seeing right now. Uh, I'll show I'll show you the videos and you guys can make your own own judgments about where you want to work. Um, so, any further questions before we jump into the videos? Okay. Did you have? Oh. Oops. All right. So I'm just going to let these run up here. Um, again, I apologize. These are kind of out of order, um, mostly because once we're in, I'm like, oh, I should document a little bit of this on my cell phone. Um, we we're anticipating that we'd have more access to come back through and do a walkthrough and it just hasn't happened yet. A um, couple of additional notes. All the furniture, everything that you see in this video is included in our lease as a purchase for Hacker Dojo for a dollar. So everything that you see, all the tables, desks, all that, all comes with the building. So this is when I mentioned to Peter, like there's a significant delta in build out costs. The reason why is everything in here comes with the building for a dollar which means that we can also sell a bunch of that that we don't use um, and help generate some of the revenue, um, some of the cash up front that we need. So that is one of the things we're looking at of how we can be a little bit creative in making sure that we have enough cash um, on hand to be financially sound as an organization. Don't he need to hear me narrating and talking over this? Can I make that bigger? So this is walking kind of from the middle of the building up towards the front. Um, one of the things I love about this building is there's a ton of natural light. It's a really, really gorgeous facility. Um, so this was prior um, to uh, the vacancy was being run by Google's lend -Lease team working on the San Jose project. So all this equipment is in excellent condition, basically brand new. Um, we've got tons of locker space. We've got... Um, really lovely nook space up towards the front. This entire side is all natural light, um, just you know, high windows. These are dedicated, would be our new dedicated desk spaces. It's not gonna be quite this much dedicated desks. We have way more dedicated desks here than we actually need. Um, and we'll have more open co-working space like this. Um, so we are gonna be taking some of those out and working on finding a good balance of that. Um, but really, as you can see, like, I think there's, half the lights on in this video. Um, but the overall space just is really, really like, very high level of like professional, did my mic just, um, like really high level professional view. I also want to really emphasize like this is a bank blank slate for us to get crazy with. We do not want to keep this like corporate chic. We want this to reflect Hacker Dojo's community, our culture. Um, so we're already reaching out to local um, muralists and artists 
um, who will be interested in partnering with us to paint murals on the walls um, and really bring a lot more character to this space. Um, polished concrete through a big chunk of the space, um, relatively new carpet throughout um, the rest of it. And then up at the front, we have a number of these really nice uh, glass walled office or conference rooms. Um, we're anticipating with a lot of these that these would be private offices for some of the um, startups that um, come out of Hacker Dojo. Um, you know, typically like three to four people per office, not huge. Um, and then a couple of really nice larger conference rooms right at the front that are between 15 and 20 um, people. And then this is our lobby area. The um, one minor detail that I love, the map um, is a map of the Sunnyvale uh, Northern and the Moffat Park area. So this is the region like right where this building is centered. Um, so really interesting, um, like just overall beautiful location that I think that we can do a lot with. And then as I mentioned, a couple of conference rooms right off the front um, that we can hold all types of different meetings in um, without having to like navigate all the way through a space. So if you have a small team meeting or mid-sized team meeting and you're bringing people in from outside, they can come in right to the lobby and get directed right off to one of the two conference rooms really easily. Um, this space, this one kind of covers a lot of the same territory. I'll go full screen on the next one. Um, so this area is the classroom area, meeting area, um, accommodates up to 60. I'm sorry that I went through that so quickly. I know for a lot of you who are hosting events, this space is pretty important. There we are. So um, projector descends down from the top. Um, the projector itself is not there, but the screen is. Um, but all the tables and chairs are there. Uh, this is a really nice space that can be reconfigured in a lot of different ways, um, but does seat up to 60 in kind of um, conference style rather than with the tables there. Uh, so you know, right now, if we do anything over 30 people, the classroom that we currently have spills out over into here. And so this would handle pretty much all of our events that are currently spilling out into this space. The question that you had of how we envision like this space being versus the expansion is something that we're still very much working on um, and really want to make sure that we're keeping this space vibrant um, as well as working over there. Um, so we are looking at how we're going to balance programming between the two spaces um, and what type of um, kind of like vibe we want to maintain here, what type of vibe we want to maintain over there. Um, and that's something that as soon as we have a chance for everyone uh, in the community to go over and walk through that space, um, we're going to have whiteboards up all over the place. You can write like, I want to be doing like this in this space, or I think this space should be used for this, uh, to provide some like more direct feedback of how, you know, how we arrange what we do, where we do different programs. Because again, like we always want to make sure that we're taking care of the community that we have. Um, and so that's one of the reasons why having a space this close um, we didn't ask for Sunnyvale. In fact, we actually asked them not to look in Sunnyvale because there's another organization right down the street that this gets close to. And we didn't want to like appear like we're getting too close to them. Uh, this is the one space that Google came to us and said, we believe this is the right space for you. Um, and so it's kind of a, like we accept that or we don't, um, but they didn't give us another option in another area but it was close enough that we feel like this doesn't have a huge impact on you know a majority of the community. I know when Hacker Dojo moved from Mountain View down to Santa Clara, like that's a much bigger jump than this would be. Um, that said, if this is going to impact you transit wise, um, we are relatively close to um, the light rail station. We are a little bit further away from the closest bus station. I know that bus route being right out front here is really, really nice. This one is a little bit more of a walk, um, but I think it's, I think it's less than a block to the nearest bus station. So it's not far. Um, 
but I do want to acknowledge like this will have changes for people who are working over in this area. But that's also one of the reasons why I want to make sure that we keep this space open for longer um, so that we have, you know, people have two years to really transition over there if they want to. Um, this is one of my favorite spaces because we know like you're, you run on how well you're fed. Um, so this is our cafe area in this building. Yep. Full screen. We'll run that again. So this cafe area, the eating area, this is a great spot for networking events for all the networking events we right now kind of do back on the pool table or um, ping pong table. Um, why are we pausing? Um, this space seats 98. So we can have some big networking events in here. Um, but beautiful light, um, white granite countertops. The biggest thing that I like about it, it's going to be way, way easier to keep clean because all the surfaces are easy to clean. Um, so clean up after events and things like that is going to be a lot easier and allow us to keep the space a little bit more clean. Right now with everyone being like kind of in the same space, that's a challenge. Um, and this would give us a dedicated area that all the eating conversations, things like that happen in one area. There's also two fridges, two full-size fridges in there. Um, and just is a really, really like, gorgeous space for hosting events. Um, and so this would be another one of those like members perks, like you want to have, you know, have a party, things like that back in the cafe area, that'll be an option um, and allow us to kind of have that a little bit separated off from the main space. So we don't have, you know, the smell of food wafting through the entire space. If someone is cooking something particularly pungent or spicy, uh, you can opt into that by going into the cafe if you want to. Um, but really, really nice um, area um, for that. Um, and then we have one room back in the back that we kind of think would be a really cool arcade um, or general game room. Um, so this does share the room with the, or share a wall with the, um, um, not racquetball, pickleball uh, court. Um, so that's why, you know, if we're doing loud things back here, you know, we're pretty much okay with it. Right, full screen. Um, but it's a really, it's a really interesting room. It's um, back towards the back of the building near the cafe area. But we think this is be a really fun lounge area. Um, but that's also like just what we think um, and not necessarily like what this space should be. So um, please do keep an eye on your email. Um, as soon as we have access to the space to get everyone over there to check it out, we're going to blast that out and set that up as soon as we can. And let us know what you think this space, this room should be used for because we can do all kinds of different things with it. We can make an electronics lab. We can make it a game room. Um, we can make it a chill lounge, yoga studio, whatever we you know, really feel like this is going to be the benefit to our community. We want to be moving forward with that. And then there's one room towards the back that is that we kind of highlighted would be our kind of maker lab. So where like we've currently got our laser cutters and 3D printers and stuff over here, this would give us a little bit more room to expand that out um, and have some dedicated what we're calling build bays, which would be, I know I'm terrible at the, start this over. So this room would be, um, so for those of you who work on hardware and want a dedicated desk where you can do soldering and all that fun stuff, um, we're planning on setting up build bays um, so that people who have longer term projects working on robotics and your robot weighs hundred pounds, you don't want to wheel it out every single day. This is where you can get a build bay, have a reserved area that you can keep your, what you're working on, what your projects are. Um, and so that's a big component of this room in particular. Um, we already have a lot of interest in this from the youth robotics teams that have used our space in the past. Um, you know, having a space where like they can go and work on things. So like, you know, you don't have a bunch of, you know, teenagers running through the area. Um, having that a little bit contained by space that is like really their workspace helps everyone have a better time in the space. Um, so we'll have a number of the, those spaces available. Um, like I said, those are called our build bays. So if you know people who are super into hardware and want a place where they can actually build um, like a robot or you know, set up a larger 3D printer or things like that, poor Dulot had to build his 3D printer like over in the hive. Um, and this would have been a great alternative for him that we just didn't have at the time. 
Um, so we are looking at ways we can be a little bit more creative with the space usage and um, kind of mitigate some of the challenges that we've seen um, in this space with not having quite enough room. So that's all the videos that I have that are useful. The rest are just like random conference rooms. Um, any questions? This, yeah, this is a building in Sunnyvale. Um, as soon as I have a lease in my hand to sign. Um, so, so currently, um, so we agreed to these terms with um, CBRE. Um, so they are currently preparing a lease for us to sign. Um, as soon as we have that, um, we're going to make a decision one way or the other. Um, the challenge with this space in particular and why I have a bunch of the videos today in a format that I'm not thrilled about, um, is it's looking like we're likely to not have access for all the members to walk through the space before we make a decision one way or the other. I don't like doing it that way, but that seems like how the timeline and Google being a little bit or CBRE being a little bit slow to get the lease back to us is looking like January 1st. I mean, officially December 1st is the last version of um, the lease or proposal was that we start December 1st. Um, given that that's less than a week away and I don't have a lease in hand, I don't think it's going to be December 1st. It'll probably be January 1st would be the commencement date. Um, and then um, so hopefully have beneficial access. So we can get in and start doing like wiring for Wi-Fi, um, get the permit process and any construction needed for getting fiber to the building. That may take a couple months. Um, so we really want to have a decision as soon as possible because we know that there is a series of, you know, cascading series of things that we have to dominoes that we have to knock down before we can be in and actually generating revenue in the space. Um, and so, it becomes very, very challenging financially if we like wait much longer um, because we have kind of like the influx of cash towards the end of the year and beginning of next year um, for um, our youth programs and things like that. If we may wait too much longer, we miss out on some good revenue opportunities. Um, and so the short answer is best case scenario, January 1st, we'd be open. A um, more likely scenario is probably opening middle of January to the end of February or beginning of February. Um, but that's the single largest challenge is getting high-speed internet in there. Um, no, that's that's open and doing business. Yeah, the, the space right now is pretty much move-in ready. Um, we have to install access control. We have to install Wi-Fi access points. Um, and we have to install screens on the walls. Um, and pretty much everything else, we have to move some furniture, rearrange the deck, you know, deck chairs a little bit. Um, but it's pretty much ready to go. And we want to be in and utilizing that as soon as possible. Um, so that's open for business middle of January. Again, that's best case scenario. Um, if there's not an active um, fiber internet connection to the building, um, that's a three month time span before that gets installed. Um, through the permitting process, construction, things like that. Um, so that's, when I say like that's the, the single largest um, hurdle. Um, that's why I've been trying to get access back in there to find out what internet is, um, what fiber is actually on the site because AT&T says they're not. That's our current fiber provider. So they said it'd be three months for them to get it in to get through the permitting process. Um, that doesn't mean that we can't be operating in there. That means that we have to look at other alternatives to fiber. So we'd be looking at a cellular um, provider, lower overall bandwidth. So if a bunch of people are in there, it's going to bog down a lot faster than the fiber would. Um, but we are planning on having a uh, two gigabit decade circuit um, fiber in there. So that's kind of our baseline. Yeah. No. It's not terribly expensive to expand up to the 10 gigabit. Um, so we anticipate if things are going well, that'll probably be an expansion for June or July. Um, but we want to get in there with the least expensive option first so that we have something up and running. Yeah. So, 
there, there, yeah, there are lots of others. Um, I haven't been able to find anyone that says, yes, we have a circuit in that building. So we have to go actually into the room and see who has, um, who has their hardware on the wall. Um, and unfortunately the pictures that I took on the initial walkthrough just weren't good enough to identify who it was. Um, and, uh, Google and CBRE haven't given us that information yet, although we've requested it. So we're waiting on a little bit of information from them to find out like what our next step is, um, and how long that, you know, that process is going to take. But we know if we do AT&T continue with our current provider, we know that that's, um, probably three months. What do you guys think about the space? Yeah, a, a couple of you, who's been over there? You've been over there. Yeah. Yeah, everybody, uh, I'm Bo. I think I know most of you, but also I'll say, well, we might not be able to get into it. I actually thought it was what's going to be the pickleball court, which was last the badminton court. But you can actually drive over there and drive around the building, and there's a couple windows you can peek into, but you can see the neighborhood, you can see the setup. So it'd be great to I get a tour. I not tell you the address. And, you know, we're hackers. This is Hacker Dojo. Uh, perhaps if somebody <laughs> – this is nothing to do with this Geneva project, but if anybody would like to talk to me about this thing called OSINT, which is open source information intelligence gathering, perhaps we could explore what a location like this would look like in person if we say stumbled into it. Um, I have not signed any NDAs and do not know any privileged information as far as I know, so maybe we'll get lucky. Um, and then uh, as, as I'll let you take a couple more questions, uh, I've got a couple of additional announcements I'll throw in, okay. um, but uh, wrap up. I say I didn't announce the address because because we have two competing offers. We do want to keep this a little bit quieter um, until we have a little bit more clarity on what direction we're going because we don't want to burn either bridge. Um, you know, if they find out that we're talking to Geneva and they decide to you know do something petty, it sucks that that's the game that sometimes has to get played in the real estate world. Um, but keep it a little bit on the down low. Um, as soon as we have a little bit more information, we will be the first ones to blast it everywhere. Um, but we wanted you guys to hear like from us uh, more directly first. Any other questions? But yeah, you can find it on Google Maps. Geneva Road is like three blocks long, so it's not like it's hard to find. I just can't tell you the specific address. Oh. It's, it's, it's not a place for you to hide your ill-gotten cryptocurrency gains. We aren't doing banking over there. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's, a gorgeous, it's a gorgeous building, really nice location. The parking is not as extensive as I would like, but it's also not heavily used the adjacent lots. So there is really good parking, uh, really good drive-up access. There is a little outdoor um, seating area. Um, at both the front and then potential in the back to have a barbecue area. Um, so we can definitely continue our barbecuing traditions over there um, and have a, a little gated area that we can roll the barbecue out of the way so it's not annoying our current landlord. Yeah. <laughs> There'll be a lot of Google bikes around there for sure. <laughs> All right. Any other questions? All right. Would you be up for coming up for just a minute for folks playing along at home? I just want to do a quick announcement. Um, thank you guys for coming. But basically, uh, I want to start a um, series of events in which we open up the space for the community to voice out their opinions on ways they want to improve the dojo and the community. So we're going to be hosting... Uh, a community improvement workshop starting Monday the 9th of December. So here coming up in like about two weeks. Uh, so we're just going to regularly host those uh, so that we give the community a space to uh, voice any concerns, uh, any opinions on improvements they want to do, and get together to brainstorm on the solutions that we can uh, put together. Uh, that way we can continually improve, uh, specifically from the core community that wants to make a change. Um, so just put those in the calendar if you guys want to uh, make any big changes in the dojo. It, it, it's going to be the alley 
for you to get your voice out. Uh, it's going to be uh, Monday the 9th at 6 p.m. And we'll have that posted um, around the space as well. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah, for, for, yeah. yeah, actually for the we do for the members meetings, we don't put it on meetup, but the community improvement workshop will be in there um, on the low key basis. Uh, we will be giving food afterwards. Uh, we'll be doing like a small barbecue for anybody of the volunteers that are there, but we won't say that on the meetup. Uh, so just so you know, just for the low key members, folks can always bring their own and there might be a convenient yeah. barbecue. Yeah. Yeah. So obviously everybody can bring their own and we can cook it for you. Bas basically we normal, most of the time it's going to be a barbecue, uh, but we'll get creative along the way. So we're going to have a bunch of these, so we're going to have to iterate. And we're going to do this again tonight. You're going to go through the full deck Q and a, yeah. yeah, we'll be doing this again tonight at six. So. Full deck, full Q and A, um, possibly yeah. social hour, hang out after. We were going to barbecue, but obviously, yeah, the weather's time. not, yeah. Um, but you know, if you want to bring, you know, soda or something stronger than soda and sit around and chat afterwards, you're more than welcome to. <laughs> so, and uh, another announcement that's now official. This has kind of been floating around for a while and whatnot, uh, but we do have some new friends moving to the neighborhood. And uh, if folks are familiar, this is Hacker Dojo Physical Incarnation 4. Uh, Physical Incarnation 2 was right around the corner, 599 Fairchild, which until recently said Boston Dynamics on the side of it. Uh, they've moved out, and if anybody's familiar with Circuit Launch in Oakland, they are now working with Singularity, and there is going to be an event there December 7th. So I'd recommend putting December 7th on your calendar and telling all your friends there's gonna be free food. One of the traditions is Brazilian barbecue. So folks are gonna be welcome. I'm hoping uh, if anybody knows they're gonna be around, it would be great to coordinate uh, some walking tours, take a group from here over there, take a group from there over here. But that should be fun and also Maker Nexus, close to this Geneva thing, um, is also doing a, a Maker Craft Fair that day. So December 7th, there's gonna be a lot of things going on. Um, if anybody is looking for an after after party in a low key warehouse towards San Jose, I will confirm that I know more than I should about that. Um, but that won't be publicly shared. Um, but if folks do end up contributing to that and spending a lot of time making us look good and helping out, there'll potentially be an after party perk for a uh, select few. And, uh, and yeah, I really appreciate hearing the, the, the event coming up to talk with the community. I would also love to see a weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, let's talk about what we're doing and showing off. Um, I brought a few projects that I'm gonna be working on today as well. So if folks are interested in hanging out once we officially tie the ribbon on this in a moment, I got a couple of things to talk about and show. I'd love to hear what other folks are working on, but maybe we can just have a little, little social hangout for a few after this. And final note, I think most of you know at this point, um, you know, I've been around, had the pleasure of seeing the space before there was anything on the walls and uh, mostly working on setting up the electronics lab and whatnot. I'm gonna be around for about another month and then I will be in Denmark for most of the year. So I'll be stopping in from time to time and aiming to drop into remote, uh, remotely into events, but time zone wise, evenings are gonna suck, but uh, mornings, early afternoon, I hope to virtually see some of you on the screen and uh, stay in touch. So uh, in the meantime, look forward to working with you. If anybody wants to get more familiar with our 3D printers, our lasers, our electronics, We've got a, a, a Ramin here in the back who's been volunteering a lot of time to help with uh, 3D printers. Yes, that confused individual. Um, and uh, we have a special host for the next 3D printer meetup. Uh, yeah, Jinx. Jinx. So we've got a local Epic 3D printer, resin and filament. They run Jinx Bot and uh, they've donated uh, dice. If uh, folks haven't seen the dice, we have a cool set of dice as a little perk for people. Uh, that contribute and help out and they're very well versed in all the things 3d printing and will be here is that a Monday Tuesday it's every, other Monday. every other Monday so the December 2nd Monday will be uh, jinx bot great time to get a refresher intro to 3d printing 
and intermediate and advanced 3D printer classes. More info coming soon. Sweet. All right. I'll let you close it out. All right. Also, um, a big thank you to Bo, who has served as our acting um, appointed secretary for the last nine months or so, um, nine, ten months, and um, has handed those duties off to Seth, one of our board observers. But can you get a round of applause for Bo for all the work that he's put in, <laughs> helping organize the meetings, calendaring, all that fun stuff. So thank you, Bo. Really appreciate it. And yeah, enjoy your time in Denmark. And given all the things going on and the expansion and the transition, it would be great to uh, have some support. So Eric has the freedom to do more uh, executive directoring and uh, we have a treasurer. And less, less filling out tax forms. Exactly. <laughs> so if, if you have experience um, particularly with um, nonprofit financials and would be interested in potentially stepping up as our treasurer, it's not a huge commitment, um, but it is a few hours each month. And then um, a few more hours during tax season, and that can be um, April or November, depending on whether or not you're ready for it. We get a six-month extension as a nonprofit, so if we need the extra time, we can get it. Um, but if you're interested in that or know someone who has um, experience in nonprofits um, and particular financial, financial management, would really love to talk with you um, and see if they're interested in helping us out. All right, any other questions? Thank you all so much for coming out today and look forward to talking more.